So you're moving to the Philippines. Well, congratulations. This is a very exciting time. I'm sure you're doing a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, a lot of research. And that's where I want to sort of come in and help you out. So when I was getting ready to move over here, there was a lot of things that I didn't know that I didn't know. So today I'm going to be talking about everything that I know or I experienced firsthand regarding electrical stuff in the Philippines. All right. Welcome back to the G5 family channel. Thanks for clicking into this video. I hope you find it informative, helpful, entertaining, all that kind of stuff. So today I'm covering some really important stuff when it comes to dealing with electrical stuff here in the Philippines. And trust me, you'll be glad to know this before you travel. Okay, before I get into it, just two quick things. I've created chapters on this video. So just look at the bottom of the video where you can pick the topic that you're most interested in. Don't get bored in the first couple of minutes and click away. I'm covering everything that I have learned that will help you plan your strategy to survive the electrical challenges that you will surely face here in the Philippines. <laughs> okay, so when I first began researching travel to the Philippines, one thing I discovered, and I'm so glad that I did, and you might be surprised to learn that 110 volts is not the standard voltage around the world. 110 volts is really only used in North and South America, while the rest of the world is standardized on 220 volts. Now these days, most of our electrical devices are gonna be compatible with 220 volts, but don't take it for granted because it'll only take two or three seconds to fry your hairdryer or your electric razor or whatever if it's a 110 volt only device. And it's pretty simple to figure this out. Just look on your device, find the UL sticker, and look at the input voltage and you'll either see 110 to 120 or you'll see 110 to 240. If you see the 240 volts, then you're good to go. Now, as far as the type of plug, in the US for 220 volt appliances, there's usually this big, huge plug that looks something like this and a normal plug will not fit in that receptacle. Pretty easy to see the difference. But in other countries, they may not all have the same plug-ins. Here in the Philippines, most of the plug-in receptacles have the standard two slots that we're used to, but will not have the third or round hole. So your plugs that have the three-prong setup will need an adapter like this one. So that's a lot of schooling to make that point, but it's important really anywhere you plan to travel. The good news, there's a gazillion gadgets that we can buy on Amazon, and I will list Amazon links to these items for your convenience down in the description. I couldn't find the gadget that I originally bought. I'm sure it's in a suitcase or somewhere, but that was a long time ago. So I did some research and found this one here at about 30 bucks. It's small and it'll support up to 2000 watts, which is important if you're going to use it for a hair dryer. You know, us guys, we have to blow dry our hair. <laughs> I haven't used a blow dryer in a hundred years. Okay, so this device would be my choice with 2000 watts. It's very small form factor. You can just toss it in your suitcase and it will invert the 220 volts down to the 110 volts that you need. All right, so that gets you from home to the Philippines. In this next segment, I'm gonna talk about moving into your apartment or house and what you might need for the day to day. Some friends of ours are getting ready to move over and wanted to know if they can bring some of their household items. They're buying a condo in Cebu and they plan to bring some of their 110 volt appliances. So to accommodate this, we can get one of these here, one of these power step down inverters. The portable device that we bought for travel is great for travel, but for a more permanent setup, this device has multiple plug-ins as well as some USB plugs. Just be thinking about the 110 volt items that you wanna bring and then pick up enough of these devices to cover those appliances. Oh, and as an additional side note, you can plug in an extension cord, but I'd be careful not to plug too many items and overload the inverter. One appliance per plug is perfectly safe. And again, you can find a convenient Amazon link in the description below. Just click in and then you can take a look at all your options. And this brings me to my third recommendation. Now this section is a little bit longer because we're talking about, you know, a long-term setup. When we first moved into our house here, I was very uneducated on the challenges that I'd be facing over the last four and a half years. First of all, I learned that it is most common that our houses will not be grounded. And I'm no electrician, but the way grounding works is it's sort of an overflow for extra power. Think of it like the little hole in your bathroom sink 
If you fill the sink above that hole, water will overflow back into the drain. And guys, let me know in the comments if you wondered what that hole was for. <laughs> that would be funny. But here in the Philippines, it's apparently not required in the code to ground the electrical system. So when the power surges, there's no place for the excess power to go. And by the way, you know, if you run your hand across the refrigerator or, you know, you touch the back of your stereo or, or something like that, you're going to feel an electric shock. It's not enough to hurt you, but it is kind of weird. And I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. So what do you do? Well, and again, I had no idea in the beginning, but someone told me I needed to get an AVR. An AVR is an automatic voltage regulator. Now, this is not something you need to buy in the US and ship over here. You can get these at reasonable prices here in the Philippines. And because electrical issues are so prevalent, they actually make really good quality AVRs. And again, they're very affordable, especially considering the benefits. Now, depending on where you live, the quality of electric power to your home may vary significantly. You might live in an area where your voltage is surging up, or you may experience lower than 220 volts. I won't bore you with the long story, but for the last 11 months, our incoming voltage to the house ranged between 160 volts to 195 volts. So like extremely low voltage to low voltage. And there was no consistent pattern to it. I mean, it didn't seem to have any kind of rhyme or reason. We just had to deal with it. They did finally fix the issue last month. So now we get a range between 200 volts and 230 volts. Again, no rhyme or reason. But how do I know what the voltage is? Well, first of all, the meter out on the pole actually displays the incoming voltage, and I'll show you a picture right here. But going back four or so years ago, I bought two AVRs, one for my entertainment electronics and the second for my computer setup. And it's like the best 200 bucks I could have ever spent. An additional benefit is that the AVR also has a step down inverter to 110 volts. So like I said, had I known this before I moved here, I would have brought a lot of stuff that was 110 volts, like some of my power tools, some kitchen appliances, stuff like that. As a side note, you might ask, well, why don't you buy an AVR instead of the little power strip inverters I mentioned before? Well, two reasons. One, before you spend $100, you might not need an AVR. And two, it depends on the appliance you're plugging in, you know, for uh, lamps, for you know, lower voltage, lower amperage items, the lower high voltage doesn't really hurt them. But, but what we ran into in the last few months with our lower than low voltage issue, I went out and bought two more AVRs to support our window air conditioners, one in our bedroom and the other here in my office space. This was a huge lifesaver because none of our air conditioners would run on these low voltages and we were sweating it out with 85, 90 degree temperatures in the house, uh, you know, especially in the afternoons. Miserable. So believe it or not, and I was truly amazed that these AVRs would essentially convert 165 volts up to 220 and the air conditioners work perfectly. Here's a little video when I first plugged in the air conditioner. <laughs> yeah, baby. 143 in, 142, 143, 142 volts in, 218 out. Yeah, baby. And as another side note, even though they finally fixed the issue, I've actually kept the air conditioners plugged into the AVRs just because we have them and they keep the voltage at a steady 220 plus or minus a couple of volts. So trying to keep this short but informative, if you have other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll do my best to answer you, at least from my own personal experience and what I've learned. I hope you found this helpful. And by the way, if this topic makes you think of something else that you'd like to know, just hit me with a comment. I'll either reply and let you know that I don't have a clue or I'll reply back and say, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll put that together. But in any case, I really appreciate you guys watching our videos. We've had a surge of 460 subscribers in the last 28 days. Thanks to all of our new subscribers. Thanks to all of you who have been with us a long time. And by the way, share the videos. If you know somebody else, if you're talking to other guys that are thinking about the Philippines, do me a huge favor, share these videos with your friends. Uh, it all helps, everything helps. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. All right, okay, with that, I'm gonna close it out. You guys have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.